as you go on YouTube. Today I'm going to fit another car stereo. I've got one to fit on the MR2, let me show you why. Right, ignore the big roller cable. I've got it on charge, I'll just leave it on a trickle charge all the time. I've not been using it for a while. But in here I've got like an old Pioneer. I can't remember the model number of this one, but it runs on like a app radio kind of thing. So I've not really got sat nav or anything like that on it. This is literally just a radio and a media player. So I want to take that out because at the minute I'm using this. I've got a TomTom -tom for the sat nav. Um, I want to get rid of that and just have my sat nav and everything on there. So what we're going to do today, we'll have a look at the new one I've got to fit. I've got another Atota. So it's the cheapest one they do, so I want to see how that compares because it doesn't run off Android like the rest of the ones I've been fitting. So it'd be interesting to see how that one runs. So we'll go inside in a minute, we'll have a look at it, we'll unbox it, and then we'll come out here, we'll fit it, I'll show you how to fit it, and then we'll see how to use it. I really need to get this MOT'd and back on the road. Look at that turbo in there. Right, so let's go inside and have a look at this thing, shall we? Right, here we are, we have the Toto F7WE. This is the cheapest one in their range. I was really interested in using this because of the price of it as well. This is currently selling on Amazon UK for £186. I'll put links in the description where you can get this. This particular one, as I said, it runs on a Linux-based system rather than an Android. So I'm quite interested to see how that works. Uh, again, this is wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. We'll test out both of those. Uh, let's open it up and have a look what you get in the box. Before we do, I've also got one of these, a little reversing camera. We'll have a look at this later as well. So if we open up the box, on the top, uh, instructions, warranty cards, all that sort of bump, wiring diagrams, the usual paperwork. Right, if I move this box to one side, let's pull all this out one at a time and see what we've got. Wi-Fi antenna, microphone for the hands-free calling, mounting plates, as with all the Atoto range that I've seen so far, three sets of looms. Uh, you get a loom A and a loom B. Uh, as mentioned before in my other videos, the only difference between the loom A and the loom B is the permanent live and the ignition live are the opposite way around. So we just have to determine which one of these you need. These are a ISO connector, uh, industry standard. If your car does not have an ISO connector to plug into these, you can get adapters from eBay or Halfords or wherever you so wish, and they'll convert your plug that's in your car to an ISO standard connector, and then you can plug in there. We just need to determine which one of these two we need to use. Uh, for those that need it, you also get the hardwired version. Uh, this plugs into the back of the stereo system, and these you can wire in yourself. Uh, each one of these, they're all labelled, uh, so you can see where you need them to go. You've also got in the instructions the wiring diagram, so you can use that if you so wish. And again, as usual, two fascias, one thin one, one thicker one. These will go around the edge of the stereo system. We'll have a look which one we need when we get to that point. The last thing in the box is a stereo system itself. So let me get this lot out of the way, we'll have a look at it and we'll talk through a few specs. Right, there we are from the front. Uh, clicky buttons, which as I've said before, I like these rather than the capacitive ones because when you're driving you can feel down with your fingers and you can actually feel the physical button. I do like those for volumes and things like that. Uh, we've got a, a little reset button in the corner. Under this little flap here, we've got a little USB connector, so you can connect your phone or memory stick or anything else you so wish into that point. Micro SD card, you can store some music and films or whatever on there. Auxiliary input if you wish to plug something in there. And a little built-in microphone. We've obviously got the other one that we're going to plug in as well. On the back, We've got a phone link cable there with the USB, so you can plug this into your phone. We can run this out to a glove box or something. As I said, it's wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, so you don't need this. But being wireless does run your battery out, so sometimes you do need to plug it in. Uh, we've got various plugs for everything else you need, like your subwoofers, uh, your amplifier outputs, your video inputs and outputs, and your line-ins, that sort of thing. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna plug, uh, antenna plug, and your main loom plug. Uh, the screen itself is a 7 inch uh, 1024 by 600 IPS display, uh, 178 degree viewing angle, so it should be a good, good quality screen. This phone link cable is a fast charge cable as well, 4 by 45 watt RMS uh, built in amplifier, so it should be a decent quality sound output. 
Uh, you've got three video inputs, uh, reversing camera input, aux audio and video in, and front video camera in. Uh, these can support up to 720 HD video signals. And that's basically it for the spec. I've also got a reversing camera, so let's have a quick look at that. This is an Atoto HD 02 LR camera. Uh, 720 HD, a uh, little tiny camera for the reverse. You get the loom. On the loom, as I've said before, if I just undo this, on the camera end, you've got the plugs that plug into the camera, the two plugs, the red and the yellow. Two cables here, a uh, black one goes to your ground. This pink one, this goes to a reverse signal. So you wire this one into your reversing light. And what this will do is when you put it your car in reverse, this will put 12 volts onto this cable. This will go down to the other end of the cable, which plugs into your stereo system. This pink wire then will connect to your stereo system and that will put a 12 volt signal into your stereo system to say that you are in reverse. Uh, this is an ignition line for the camera. This camera is an optional extra, so I'll put a link below for this one as well. So let's take this out to the car now and let's get it fitted. Right, here we are in the MR2. Uh, I've got the stereo there. I've got the Insta360 set up. I've got a new bracket for it actually that'll bolt onto there. So later on we can do some really nice driving shots in this car. Uh, first job is we've got to get this out. Uh, this here is a pre-facelift cover so if anybody's fitting an aftermarket car stereo in a mr2 spider a roadster or whatever you want to call it get hold of a pre-facelift uh surround because they fit perfect the 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 ones for the on the facelift you have to have little filling bits at the sides get a pre-facelift one and then a doubled in stereo fits straight in it so let's get this out right radio's out there it is. It's got these brackets fitted to it, which is part of the MR2. I need to remove those off of this Pioneer so I can put them on the, the new one. But before I do that, I've got to take the rest of the Pioneer stuff out. I've got a lot of the looms here are the Pioneer looms. Uh, behind there, I've got some plugs, so I'll, I'll rip all those out. Over there, as you can see, there's a GPS. We don't need that for the new one. I've got a microphone there. Uh, I need to take that one out. Whilst I'm taking that one out, I've got a new one in this box here, uh, which is on a different size plug. I'll run this one in and I'll put that up there as well. I'll run the wires down and get them down to here. And then this microphone here will live up there. Uh, over here, I've got the sat nav. Uh, I've, got a, I've got that hard wired in. So I need to take this out and get the wire out that's down there. Uh, <laughs> This one here goes to the sat nav so i can get that one out and i'll get everything stripped out back so it's more or less back to the original mr2 wiring uh, i have got more wires down here that i've wired in i can't remember what a lot of this is it's what i've done previously i think it's power for the gauges and power for other things like that so i'll leave that alone right down here inside you can see there there's the original toyota wiring and then between that plug and this black plug here, uh, this is an ISO adapter. This is what I was talking about that takes the original Toyota plugs and converts them into an ISO. So I will leave that adapter in there. But what I will do is this one here, this is the Pioneer loom. I'll disconnect that and then the new one can go into these ISO plugs here on this ISO adapter. Right, there's most of the looms out. I've got this one here still, which is the microphone. Uh, also, while I'm here, you see that camera there? That's a little dash cam. I'm gonna take that out as well. Uh, down here, you'll see a little next base box. That's the power supply for that. I'm gonna take that out as well, because in a couple of weeks, I've got a new camera coming that's gonna go up here that's gonna be a lot better. So I'll take that out as well while I'm at it now. Uh, there you are, you can see I fit the microphone in there. That's tucked in nicely at the side of that mirror. Uh, the wire comes along and it runs down this pillar here and I've got it coming out the bottom. So I'll get that going across. I've taken out that next base camera and the wiring for that. Um, I've left the 12 volt wiring for that camera in there. I'm gonna tuck it behind this cover here because as I said, I'm gonna get another camera there later on. Uh, so I'll have some wire in there ready to permanently wire the new camera in when I get that. That's all back together now. All this is all tidied up behind there. Uh, right, the, 
only wires sticking out here now are the ones we need for the radio uh, we've got the iso plug there for the power this is the microphone that we've just installed uh, here i've got an amplifier behind this seat there i've got a little amplifier and a subwoofer right so that's what they're for they go to this amplifier uh, this blue one as well this is the power for the amplifier i've just put a little wago on there so we can connect it into the loom back here we've got this one which is the antenna which is kind of a little bit irrelevant on this car because i've took it off because of the wide body uh, next thing we have to do is determine which one of these we need it's pretty easy on this one because it's red and yellow but we'll test it with a test meter just to make sure that then i can show you guys how to determine which one of these to use right if i get this test meter put it on dc volts uh, what it should be is this yellow one should be a permanent 12 volts and the red one should be an ignition 12 volts so if i put the black to black and this red one to the yellow we can see there look we've got 12 volts if i put it round to this red one we've got nothing if i get the keys out turn on the ignition We've got 12 volts so we can use this one which is exactly in the same order we've got the 12 volt permanent going to the yellow and the ignition 12 volt going to the red so on this one it's connector b we'll plug that in now this blue cable if you can see that it says amplifier turn on drip that back i'll plug this into the wago for the amplifier there we are so there we've got the amplifier so that is literally all we need to plug in on this right next job uh, these brackets on the side there what we've got to do is i've got to get those onto this radio here we've got these little plates here which fit onto the side of this radio so what we'll do is we'll fit those onto the side and then we'll get these to fit onto the side there what we have to do first is these bits screw onto the side of there like that so i'll get those little screws and we'll screw that on that's those screwed in there depending on the type of the car you've got uh what you normally do is you find the position where to screw these are and then that goes back into your dash and you can screw that back there on this one i need to take these brackets off and fit those into that position the same as this one so i'll do that right there we are both sides in uh what i've done is i've left this front screw out of both sides because that was catching under there and pushing it out so i've took that screw back out so in theory now i should be able to plug this in right before we go any further i just want to do a quick power up this is first startup so let's see how quick it is from a very first startup right there we are that's all working so what i can do now is we'll get it all tidied up um, i might actually plug that reverse camera in just so we can show you what it looks like and then we'll have a look how to use it we won't be needing these covers because on this we've got this one which will sit around the display nice and tight as you can see here i've got a wire coming out what this is is the reverse camera i've wired that in to the back light for a reverse signal I've put the camera there just so we can see what it looks like let's go and have a look inside right so the radio's on if i put it in reverse we have a reverse camera and that's the picture that we're getting out of it good quality we'll go through all the settings properly in a minute uh, but while we're on the camera if we go across the settings and scroll down to camera settings at the bottom uh, it's got a parking assist so if we turn that on and go back to the beginning put it in reverse uh, we've got the little lines there for the assist i think i'm actually going to fit this camera uh, what i'll do is i'll fit it when i've got time because i've got to run the cable right through the car but as you can see there i'm i am going to fit this and i'm going to angle it just so you can see the back of the car a little bit just so you can line it up properly i know it does look like i'm when i'm doing this it's super reflective this screen it is super reflective but for my eyes up here in the driving position it's actually not bad at all it's quite a nice good colorful screen and i can see everything perfectly fine so let me get this back together and then we'll go through all these settings properly right this camera cable i've tidied up there i'm going to stuff it down there behind that carpet and keep it stashed there uh, the other cable down here is this usb one i'm going to run that up 
put it in the glove box just in there so if I want to plug a phone in. Right, I've just finished and I'm having to take it all apart again because I forgot the Wi-Fi antenna. Don't forget the Wi-Fi antenna. Right, I'm kind of liking this new mount for the Insta. We'll be able to get some good shots with that later, especially driving. Right, let's have a look how to use this, shall we? Right, along the bottom we've got the usual power mute, volume controls, previous next and home button. Um, if we go it into this button, you can see this is where we set up everything uh, for the CarPlay and the Android Auto. First thing I think we need to do is we need to connect a phone to it. If we go into settings, down to Bluetooth settings, and there we've got our device name there. If I go into my phone and um, Bluetooth, and let's look for that F7 BT774E. Now there it is, down at the bottom. First thing we can do is we can connect to that pair. I'll click pair on there. OK on the radio. Back to the phone. Allow contacts and everything. Yes, we'll allow that. Uh, back on the display, uh, we've got uh, works with Apple CarPlay. Tap OK to enable CarPlay. Yes, we want to do that. Back on the phone again. It says use CarPlay. This is only a one-off, obviously. Once it's connected, it'll do this automatically. Uh, it says check iPhone 13 Pro to connect. Oh, there we are. As you can see, it's come up straight away with the CarPlay. Right, back to the home screen. The first one's Android Auto. We're not connected on Android Auto. We've just got the Apple phone connected at the minute, which is over here. This is on the Apple CarPlay. Actually, I've got some royalty-free music set up there, so we can use this just to show our music. You can hear the subwoofer working. I pause that. Go back to the main screen. Um, I'll not go through the features of CarPlay. There's a million videos on the internet about them. But as you can see, we're connecting to CarPlay. Back to the home screen. The next one along is the radio. Uh, this is radio. Uh, we, this has got usual radio features. Uh, press to search. Um, press and hold to save what station you're on now. We'll probably not find a station anyway because... I've not got an aerial connected, so we'll forget about the radio, but this is your radio. It's not DAB, it's your usual analogue radio. I don't use these anyway, to be honest. Uh, back to the home screen. Uh, this one here, this is for if you've got a memory card or USB connected, then you can play your media from this one here. Um, we've already spoke about the CarPlay. Up at the top, we've got the home button, the back button, uh, a brightness button, if we press the brightness, you can see how it fades it between different brightnesses. We'll get the same effect when we turn the lights on. There you are, the car lights are on and it's faded. Car lights are off and we've gone back high again. Please excuse my dirty fingers because we've just been installing this thing. Uh, this one here shows you the connected phones. Currently I've only got my iPhone connected. Uh, we'll try the Android Auto in a minute. Because this is off the Linux system and not an Android Auto, it's very limited features, which is actually quite good because it, it runs nice and responsive. It's got exactly what I need on it, which is CarPlay. We've seen the reversing camera working. So we've got a decent size equaliser on this. Uh, we can set this up to however we want it, make it quite personal. Let's try Android Auto. Right, I've got a little Google Pixel phone. I'll use this for the Android Auto. So same again. Let's go into settings. First thing up is we'll connect this by Bluetooth. Down to connected devices. Pair new device. Wait for it to pop up. There it is. F7 BT774. Uh, allow access. Click pair. Uh, on the radio, it says allow to pair, we'll click OK, we'll let it connect and do its thing and see what happens. Right, it says it's active. On the screen, it says wireless connection not supported, please use a USB cable to get started. So let's get a USB cable and see what happens next. Right, I actually thought this was wireless, so what we'll do is we'll try it plugged in first and see if it actually connects wireless later. But I've got a cable, I've plugged it into this phone link. Let's plug it into the phone and see what happens. I'll click OK on the screen. Right, we've got lots of things popped up. Uh, continue setup on your car screen. So if we go to there, welcome to Android Auto, click continue. We've got Android Auto up and running now. Uh, let's try it wirelessly. So if I go back to the phone, Unplug it, we're still on wireless, uh, Android Auto. Let's go back to the home screen. Press the Android Auto button. 
seems to be letting us back on. So doing it by wire was literally just a one-off to do at the beginning. So we connected wirelessly on the Android and we connected wirelessly on the Apple phone as well. So that seems to be working perfectly fine. Right, so it started raining. I seem to be getting drowned through my window. It's probably about it. That's all I can show you on this stereo system. Uh, for a cheap stereo, it does exactly what I need it to do anyway. So I'm going to leave it in this MR2. I'm quite impressed with that, actually. Now I can have my navigation and everything all on the same screen. So yeah, that's turned out quite good. Later on, I'll get that camera routed through into the back because it's actually a really good picture, that. And I know this is a little car, but I have smashed in the back of this previously in one of my really old videos, reversing into a post uh, so if you want to see more like this video if you liked it of course subscribe to the channel i've got this new dash cam coming in a couple of weeks that's quite a posh one as well actually uh, so we'll get that fitted we'll do some videos on that i've got to do the head gasket on the van i've still got to work on the engine on this car as well there's loads i've got to do i just haven't had time to do a lot of it so i'm just trying to get through a few little bits when i can so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll catch you guys again cheers